I learned so much from him to be always, he, this is something very important. He told us not to um, be judging people, talking negatively about others and to, um, but to be honest, to accept people because everything, everyone has his own, his own or her own way of living. We are all different diversity and that's the, that's nature. Welcome to Wellness Spring, our one-stop shop for education, inspiration, motivation, and optimal wellness. Learn from top experts and exceptional people. Welcome to Wellness Spring. Dear friends, I am so blessed to be with a very special guest today, Michiko Hayashi, who is the Global Director and Ambassador of Emoto Peace Project, which is a non-for-profit organization. And I am so grateful to our communal friend, who's also a beautiful soul, Jeff Granville, for introducing us. And Michiko and I have since become lovely friends, and she is the su successor of Dr. Emoto's legacy and distributes his children's book, The Message from Water, for free to all children and gives lectures to teach water memory and that our consciousness creates reality as well as teaching the importance of love and gratitude through the message from water to make the world a harmonious place. Machiko is always busy and always traveling. She is also the author of anthologies, Womb to Thrive and Love Letter to Water. She received the Magna Luce Award from the Foundation 1A1 in the Dominican Republic in July, 2021. And that, dear friends, is just touching the surface of what she does. Welcome, Michiko. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Beverly. It's so Pleasure. lovely to be here with you. Pleasure. I'm so grateful for, for Jeff Granville for introducing me and connecting us. Thank you. Thank you. And um, for the audience, I've had a couple of lovely chats in private with Michiko, and we are planning to do something wonderful together. And um, for now, before we delve into all your wonderful work, could you please tell the listeners about your background, where you grew up? I know you're calling from Japan today, and I'm in um, south of Queensland. And if you tell us about mm -hmm. your parents and any parents, siblings. Okay. All right. Okay, real briefly. Um, I was born in Japan and raised in Japan until eight, the age of 18. My, I lived, I was born and lived in the southern part of Japan called Fukuoka. It's a prefecture called Fukuoka. And my, my father was actually a priest, Buddhist priest. Buddhism priest and um so I learned a lot from my father to begin with to be humble to be kind and compassionate all those um and be diligent and my mother was um he she owned the restaurant so from her um by helping her at the restaurant I learned to be um how to communicate with other people as well so um, when, but at the age of 18, when I graduated from my high school, I went to the United States to study in college. While I was in college in Portland, Oregon, called Lewis and Clark College, 
um, I went to Costa Rica and and learned to speak in well learn to speak Spanish there because that was one of my major languages that I learned and after I graduated from the uh, from my college Lewis and Clark College I came back to Japan and came to Tokyo to work um, but in uh, in 2004 in April I started working for Dr. Moto as a personal assistant and that was when well before that I was um, after I got married I had two sons and because I wanted to raise my own sons by myself so I decided to stay home to raise my ch children. And at that time, I was a translator writing also um, English books. And when I finished translating Starbucks book from English into Japanese, I decided to take some time off. And that was when I, I read Dr. Emoto's books. And I was fascinated with his... Um, um, hado, hado means vibration. The, the knowledge that Dr. Emoto had about vibration and also how he was taking the water crystal pictures from different wars and all that. So I went to see his website and there it said he was looking for someone who could help him with, uh, with uh, 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 translation rights to his books. So I had the feeling that he needed me, and that's how I met Dr. Melto in person. And ever since then, I'm here. And um, I started working as his personal assistant. Wow. And um, I'm guessing that you must have studied languages, or what did you study in um, university? I started, I studied. My first language was Spanish. The second language was French and Italian. Wow. And my major was foreign languages. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah, I and learned all these languages in, in English. So, so I guess I, that was uh, my, my passion as well. I wanted to be a translator or interpreter, but... Wow. Um, no, that's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's great. And um, how did you, you mentioned about, well, I, I know you've written two books. Have you always been passionate about writing? And do you want to tell us briefly about your two books that you've written as well? Thank you. Yes, um, especially with this uh, book called Womb to Thrive. That's the book for um, mothers for people in general, but especially for young ladies who will become mothers. Because in that book, there are 26 authors, wow. specialists, talking about the importance of the time of pregnancy. And Dr. Emoto had taken water crystal pictures from amniotic liquid and wow. showing some words and pictures and stuff, but um, he did not write the book on the pregnancy. So when I was asked to write, the, uh, contribute a chapter for that book, I knew that was really important because the water crystals from like uh, from amniotic liquid shows that from the moment of conception, conce conception the babies do have memory and they have consciousness. They know what is happening, how mothers, what kind of emotions mothers have, and that all affect their babies. So um, I'm very happy that I was able to do that. Wow, that's amazing. And yes, I often um, give talks on water and we say, you know, we're 70% water and some scientists believe more and the planet's um, 70% water and obviously um we're born in a sack of water as well and it's mm -hmm. really good to i know shirley temple's mother used to take her to the theater and show 
take a sightseeing and give a history lessons just to educate. So how important do you think it is when from conception onwards um, or even preconception when you're trying for a baby? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Preconception. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's when um, when the babies are in the womb and when mothers go through the difficult time, the babies already have the trauma at that time. And when they are born, when they are born at the hospitals, um, sometimes, you know, um, they, they go through a difficult time and they see all the lights and everything that is not un very unnatural. Then at that time, their babies are already scared. So that's another trauma that we are giving. So I am recommending uh, natural birth also. I mean, if um, there's any danger, then, you know, medical um, interference is really important. But still, being born in a natural way is very important. And mothers are really happy that way as, as well. That's beautiful. And it's really nice for the mother to c connect with the baby in the womb and also the partner, mm -hmm. if the partner's around, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of people choose to have babies by themselves today and so forth. But if there's another significant other or family members to talk to the baby. And right. Your other book is Love Letter to Water. So mm -hmm. what did, um, how did that come about? That was um, the, the person who published this book was living in, in Canada. What was his name? Claudi, Claudia. Um, he moved to, to Panama and he's now living in Panama with his family. But actually he was, he asked me to contribute one part, one chapter. And um, there are many many people who have contributed also and there I when I wrote I made a mistake because I thought that the title was love letter from water I thought but it was actually love letter to water so when I wrote um I was just talking about how what how different every water was and all the rains in Japan used to have different names in each water I mean rains so there were like more than 800 names to rain like wow it rains really hard yeah we we don't have that many now but we used to have that so I explained the, the history of water in Japan so oh, that's amazing. That's another mm -hmm, beautiful yeah, book. Because that was one of the questions I was inspired to ask you today as well about the consciousness of mm -hmm. different stars of water. Because last night we were in our van and we were staying next to a waterfall and we had a huge storm. And, oh. you know, branches were being blown off the, some of the trees and one big branch oh. in particular. And then when it passed mm -hmm. for or paused for a little while, we went down and seen the water. So because um, Dr. Emoto thinks that and many other scientists as well think that water is our consciousness, when we have big floods, do you think that that's god or consciousness or spirit giving us a message like a collective message for the people in the country definitely yes i have two uh, thoughts about that one is the message given by water water as dr moto used to say water is god mm. and so it has the consciousness as we see each water, it doesn't really seem like it, it has consciousness, but when it comes to like tsunami or huge storm, something, you can really feel the powerful energy of the water. And through that, 
uh, especially with tsunami, when you see it, it really looks like it's a um, entity, living entity coming and trying to get obtain everything with anger. And after when it's come, it's gone. And as you can see, when that happens, everything that he man created is gone. But nature is the only thing that stays there. So mm -hmm. God, to me, God is teaching us, giving us the message to be humble, to respect, to, to appreciate nature, and also water. Yeah, that's a so, very, very good, because okay. also, I also think whenever there's a disaster, like one year I was living in Bermuda and they had a tornado, and then afterwards mm -hmm. the community comes together and we did have, we did in Australia help after the tsunami in Singapore, Thailand. There was a massive one about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I organized mm -hmm. um, with the local football club to do um, massage. And the football players, all the teams were doing a round robin. So everybody got involved and it was a lot of fun. And it was a great way, you know, for a good cause to bring mm -hmm. peace and love to the community again, you know, and do something fun. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, Wonderful. I know the listeners will be keen to find out um, when you first met Dr. Emoto, and I am as well, you know, what did he look like? What was his mannerism? How did the interview go? And how did you connect? <laughs> well, um, he, to me, he was just one ordinary man, you know, just um, my, my boss, my, my mentor, but he was always so honest. He was a very honest, pure person, and he loved um, to see everyone having fun together. And um, I learned so much from him to be always he, this is something very important. He told us not to um, be judging people, talking negatively about others, and to, um, but to be honest, to accept people because everything, everyone has his own, his own or her own way of living. We are all different diversity. And that's the that's nature. Yes. So it was. He was very open minded always. He he because he was so honest or truthful to himself. So when he's upset, he's upset. When he, but he would be always open to people. He would be happy to have people accepting everyone. So. It was really nice to be around him. I'm very honored to be, um, to have been his uh, personal assistant. It was really nice because he was a Emoto family when he, even now, but his wife was here, is here even now. I mean, he, she doesn't come in there every day, but now, even now she comes in to work with us and his sons are here also. So it was always we were always together with the fa as a family. Oh, that's beautiful because I think family is mm -hmm. so important. And, you know, our ancestors as well, when you talk about respect, is respecting our ancestors. And, right. you know, the, what we do, I say to people, our action or inactions will help everybody around us, not help, but affect everybody around us, you know. And if you believe in future lives for our future lives, you know, so mm -hmm. children are the way of the future. And um, I, from my experience in my traveling, I've noticed that um, the children are bringing so much love already into the world. And um, children nowadays are very different from the children that we used to be because they are so conscious about things and universe and peace and harmony and they're just so loving and giving so this is a really good sign great and um firstly will you t tell the audience about um 
how Dr. Emoto started his research. Thank you for asking. Yes, he was um, at the beginning. He was um, a doctor of all alternative medicine, and he helped more than ten thousand people before he started to do the research on water. And at that time, he was using the uh, device called Hado machine. Hado means vibration, vibra vibrational machine, to detect the root cause of the the problems that he, the clients had. And what he did was he uh, imprinted the vibration to neutralize the negative cause and had the, each patient drink their water. And, and that's how he um, helped all the clients, more than 10,000 people. At that time, he knew that he was saying that everything is vibration. Everything has frequency, it's uh, uh, vibrating. and so water is the conductor of that vibration. Ah. He, was, he wanted to show everyone that every water is different and everything is vibration and water is the conductor of our consciousness and, and uh, everything that water sees or hears or, or exposed to and right. has stores memory and transmits the information. So he kept thinking what he can do to prove that. Then one day he saw the, the book of um, snowflakes. That was the day that he decided to take the water crystal photos, frozen water crystal photos. And it took him about uh, two months and a half or almost three months before he captured the first crystal picture. But after that, he just, uh, well, actually not himself, but his assistant, who was the scientist with PhD, was able to start take, um, getting, obtaining many crystals. And then he, they discovered something very important, that water has memory and shows whether this um, vibration is positive or negative in the form of crystallization and in um, water crystals like this. And this water crystal is after showing the word love and gratitude, two words together. And in that this, what Dr. Emoto said that water shows the most beautiful crystal from the word love and gratitude. It's not only I love you. It's not only thank you, but both words together. Then he kept thinking, why does water show this such a beautiful, most beautiful crystal, the formation? Then he came up with this idea, well, learned from nature that the, the creator designed this earth based on love and gratitude. And that's why water responds so beautifully to love and gratitude. Oh, that's, and, I, I fell in love with his book when I seen it in a shop and I had to buy it, not knowing anything about it. The hidden messages of um, mm -hmm. water, the dark vision of what you just showed. And mm -hmm. um, I used to place it in my kitchen or when I had my healing center in Rose Bay in mm -hmm. Sydney, I had a few pie mags and I put the books next to that so people could browse through, you know, if they're waiting oh. for someone and, so, and just the photographs, but they were so powerful. Even just looking at the photographs, you could feel the mm -hmm. vibrant energy. And then that led me to um, look at um, contaminates in water because I was fascinated by, you know, um, the if you do positive words like love and gratitude, it'd come up like a beautiful, beautiful sacred geometry shape and structure. Mm -hmm. And then if you had words like hate and anger or war and vile words, it would be very murky and dark and black. So mm -hmm. got me thinking, what is the best water to drink? And um, this is going back about 20 years ago or more, probably 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um 
you know, there was a watchdog called ASEV and they went around Britain and France and they were checking the water and they found that a lot of people were bottling in London and Yorkshire, putting tap water in EVM bottles because it looks trendy, mm -hmm. you know, and selling it. And um, in France, the farmers were complaining about the contaminants in water and the government was saying, mm -hmm. no, it's fine, it's fine. I think this was about 2010. And then when they mm -hmm. looked at it, they had 30 of the really bad contaminants. So in the UK and in France, they started checking the water. You know, I'm not sure mm -hmm. how frequently now because I couldn't find my research um, before this call to give you the correct stats. And... Um, you know, they're saying in at least they test the water, the councils test the water so they know when it leaves their water depot, there's no contaminants in it. Whereas in bottled water, they were saying it tells you what's good in it, but they don't tell you what's bad in it. And most bottled water right, comes in right. plastic and you don't know how long it's been sitting in the plastic and if it's been in the exactly. heat and what it's doing so mm -hmm. i'm curious to know what is the best water to drink and what your thoughts are on tap water and so forth the best water is a natural spring water mm. near your place but we have to be careful if, if it's not contaminated as well because mm. some um I, I would like to show you the natural waters are really beautiful. They're supposed like at the molecular level, all the natural waters are supposed to be very, very beautiful. So mm. this is really directly um, related to our good health. So when we drink really good water, natural spring water like this, then our body, the water within our body is really healthy. And mm. beautiful and um as you can see the water is in, in many places nowadays waters are so contaminated we humans are doing it we continue to do it and water is very sad i know that water is really sad and see this is yeah. the upstream of water it's so beautiful but when it comes down to the midstream it's ugly like this mm. that's where we live we are polluting water and when it goes to the downstream it goes like this so the best is we should not pollute water the best water is to drink the beautiful spring water maybe you can check it and when you drink it, and if you feel, if you can taste the sweetness of water, that's a good water for you. Because depending on your condition too, physical con condition, uh, you, you feel differently. And the water that you can taste sweet is the good water for you. That's what Dr. Emoto used to say. And... Um, so obviously not everybody lives next to spring and running water so when mm -hmm. you're saying spring water when we're in shops we buy spring water in the bottles right right in the bottles and yeah. i would, i recommend using the the um, glass bottle not yeah. plastic bottle because yeah. you don't if you keep the water in the plastic bottle it's not good in plastic itself it's not good because when we finish using it. A lot of people throw it away. If we don't recycle it, it's a pro another problem. So bringing um, glass is a better one. And if you cannot have the, the, the best water, if you don't know whether it's good or bad, then you can write thank you. Or you can even say thank you to one. Drink it just before you drink it. Right. Yeah, I was... I show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I received a text from someone about three months ago. Um, they said, why not make a revolution with the water like John Lennon, uh, 
did with Imagination, the song, you know, about bringing peace, love and harmony into the world. And every time you drink water, say, I'm drinking water and I nourish peace. And I thought that mm -hmm. was a really beautiful message to give to your body. I'm nourishing peace. Right, right. It's, um, it's our consciousness. It's really consciousness is vibration, powerful energy. And now, as we know that we all know by now that almost two thirds of our body is filled up with water. And yeah. whatever I think, whatever you think, affects water within us, water around us in the air, and affects everything in nature because it, our energy is expanding. And when we think about nature, um, during the, well, starting last year, we started to do this World Water Festival in Japan. And many people joined us, thousands of people joined us live. And we asked everyone to offer the prayer together to, to water. And we did the three different testings in here, um, of course. These are wow. water crystal pictures of before and after the water changes. And also here, you can't see because it's Japanese, but pollution, even pollution level changed. It's, it was purified that even fish can live in this water. Before the, the prayer, it was contaminated, polluted. But even pollution got improved. So, so you can really see how powerful our consciousness is and yeah. how it, we are affecting water and in the world. Thank you. And when you talk about consciousness, because many people describe her in different ways, what, what, do you, what is your definition of consciousness? Consciousness is our thoughts, our feelings, emotions. Because um, it comes from, well, sometimes from brain, but from heart. And when you send our, um, we have consciousness. One is intention. One is without thinking, it's emotion that comes out naturally. So those two, including everything, is consciousness. And one thing that we can do is we can transform it. Wow. When we observe our, my own habit, when you observe your own habit of what you think, what kind of emotions you tend to have, what kind of words you tend to use, then you know the tendency of your consciousness. Then we can start to transform to the positive way. So briefly, what you're saying is water can help us to make the world a more peaceful place to live in. Yes, it's um yeah catalyst. Catalyst. Okay, that's I wonderful. Uh -huh. And um, mm -hmm. I believe you you are now going to have an annual World Water Festival because it was so successful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, we will have it again on the 11th of November this year and it will be held in the in the Kyushu southern part called Aso that's really one of the most abundant with water the area is abundant and most beautiful water that they have so to that water from there we would like to send um, love and gratitude to water, the, our prayer to water from there to all around the world with everyone. Oh, so that's beautiful. Thank you. And um, this information is on um, your website? Of World Water Festival? Yes. It's um, www.worldwaterfestival.net. Fantastic. And I'll add it with the show notes as well. And um, people Thank can you. contact you directly. 
and um can people come do you still have the Hado um apparatus in the laboratory in your office and do you or Dr. Moto Sans um see clients privately there for a yes, healing? Yes, yes, we do have that. Yes, we still do that. We have that section is specialists who are doing that. So people can come and and have the, the consultation and they we make waters for them. So um, yeah. Yes. Well, we, they can contact us at hado, H -A -D -O dot com. It's fantastic because obviously as a healer, you know, I think our thoughts bring on any disease and um, mm -hmm. seems our body is primarily water, like you just said, two thirds, because I know each cell um, is 99% water. So it's really important to keep ourselves in balance. And for me, as a Reiki master, I know you've done pictures of um, people giving Reiki to the water as well. And mm -hmm. it came out like perfect geometry. So, and there's lots of apparatus. There's one I've got, which is called um, an Aquatone, which looks like an old fashioned uh -huh. um, handheld device. But that's mm -hmm. Russian technology made by a Swedish man, uh, made by a Russian man living in Sweden. And it actually is mm -hmm. the only technology that talks to the water in your cells and oh. you know, realigns the cells so i'll send you some information mm -hmm. if you don't know anything about it yes and i'm sure yes, he'd be glad you. to chat mm -hmm. with you as well and get involved and i used to say to people it's my um, battery operated reiki because when we do reiki and put our hands on people obviously we're talking to the universe so again it's our intention and i said mm -hmm. if we have disease it's like uh, a lake or a dam that is stagnant and rank and murky and smelling and what the reiki does is scoops it all out and puts fresh water in or realigns the structures so that there's only fresh water so you can be in perfect mm -hmm. alignment again so that's wonderful what yeah. is the work you do with children that you do with children you yeah Oh, what do I do with children? I'm sorry, I lost yeah, you. Yeah, you, 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 you mentioned that I know that you give free books or Dr. Moti used to give free books to children right. around the mm -hmm. world. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is the children's book that um, Dr. Moto started giving to all children for free of charge. Of course, we do have, we ask for donations, but uh, for children, they are all free. And in here, well, he started doing this in 2005, and he said that he would give this book of, uh, of uh, 650 million children's books to all children wow. around the world. So now we have this book translated into 34 languages. Now wow. 35 languages almost done. So, and and if anyone see here it shows beautiful um the words like thank you and you cool like this the differences and if children learn about the importance of water and the truth of water and the beauty be beauty of um love and gratitude and peace and war here see like right. this children would not want to fight the children would want to this is before the the prayer after the prayer to water so wow. they will learn about the powerful how powerful our thoughts are our water the, the water is and how we are connected with water so if there's anyone who would like you they can contact me also then i i'm happy to send from here that's yeah. wonderful and but do you also Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask, do you educate the teachers as well or the parents so that they're yes. open for it so then they can follow yes. through with the children? Yes. Thank you for asking. Yes, I do. 
talk to parents, teachers, to any people um, from little children to adults or grandma, grandpa as well. So anyone who would like to uh, have me talk to them and please let me know. That's wonderful. Um, yesterday, I, I don't know if you can see it, I got given this glass water bottle and at the bottom okay. it's filled with rose quartz crystals. And oh, beautiful. Yeah. And you can open it and you can change it and put any different crystals in that you choose. Um, mm -hmm. I was just going to ask you from your experience, you know, will that infuse the energy of love into the water? Of course, of course, yeah. of course, because water receives every energy vibration of everything. So if you have rose quartz, love energy goes in. So oh. that's a really beautiful thing that you're doing. Yeah, um, because um, my husband bought us a surprise because I've been making rose water and leaving some on the land where we're traveling, especially in areas where I think they need it. And we've come mm -hmm. to areas where there's, people have left a lot of litter. So I've been doing Reiki on the land and I've also um, been sharing the Reiki as we're traveling in the van, but also leaving rose water. And I do messages of love and a little prayer to the water before I scatter it. Oh, so, <laughs> thank you. That's beautiful. One thing I would like to bring back is uh, indigenous people's um, rituals. You know, they mm. used to do that all the time. And yeah. nature really appreciated it and really enjoyed it. But because of um, ever since 2020, after this pandemic, they stopped so i really hope that all these indigenous people come back and start doing the dancing and appreciating of nature and all elements and and start doing that the dances and giving vi good vibrations to nature yeah i think now all is around the, the world yeah i think now is the time for a digital detox and to really mm -hmm. spend time in nature and learn from nature and just sit and watch nature and recently I was in a place called Bulldog in northern New South Wales and they've got massive rocks with loads of crystals in them so Ooh. I precariously laid down on the rock because it was quite steep and just asked the rock to give me healing and to align whatever I needed and to fill me mm -hmm. with the essence so that when I breathe that I can share the love mm -hmm. and energy out. But I think for right. children, Wonderful. I think for children in particular, because, you know, everybody and young, young teenagers, but everybody, because we're all addicted to our mobile phones and Facebook, social media. So it's a really mm -hmm. good way. Um, I'm just aware of the time. So one quick question, someone messaged to say, they don't like drinking water it is tea or coffee or you know squash in water is that okay does it have the same effect because the main content is water the best is to drink pure water but also when you drink a coffee tea anything it it is water too so okay just uh, always having the feeling of gratitude loving and gratitude right and i put lots of different words like love peace joy harmony on my water filter is that too much is it better to just have one word or it it's okay oh oh it doesn't matter it's it's good that you have many different positive beautiful words because every words have the vibration and yeah. water receives that Great. And I know you work with a lot of scientists and um, you mentioned Dr. Gerald Pollack earlier from Seattle. And um, he's written that amazing book, um, The Fourth Phase of Water. And mm -hmm. can you share with us what the about him and his work and what the scientists do to contribute to your work? Well, thank you. He is my favorite scientist because um he's so humble even though he's so famous he's the leading 
um, scientist on water. He is wow. the chief journal, chief um, editor of a journal called Water also, and he conducts the World uh, International Water Conference every year. All the water researchers come in and give the presentation. But the most importantly, his team and he discovered the fourth phase in water that is beyond solid like ice or liquid, like just the general water or vapor in here in the air. There's one more phase that's called fourth phase. And he calls it easy water also because it's an exclusion zone. That's when the, all the um, things, substances that are in the water is excluded. It becomes more like a gel type of water. And the structure of that um, water is very firm, like um, hexagonal um, B hive or whatever you call honeycomb honeycomb yeah yeah it's structure so it's really really stable and that's where water remembers everything that it sees hears exposed to wow. and keeps the memory there that's why when we take the water crystal photos we the, it reveals that vibration or information and he announced something very imp important and very interesting you may want to have you interviewed him no but jeff is going to introduce me or i'm happy for you to introduce me as well um to to He's dr gerald pollack because i'm i've just got his latest book so i'm busy reading that and then i'm happy to chat with him good good yes i highly recommend him because um just last year in october during this um world you know international water conference he his presentation was about fourth phase of water having that uh energy to for the the um, earthquakes and volcanic eruption and all that and it has that energy and remember water is deeply connected with with our consciousness yes so all that is really related yeah it be really fascinating oh yeah to um, interview him I d I'm definitely looking forward to it and keep my fingers and toes crossed that he's got time mm -hmm. to accept an interview so Yes. And I just want to end by saying um, I really appreciate you giving up your wonderful time and thank you for all you do and the wonderful work that you're bringing into the world. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for this beautiful work that you're doing to spread the importance of our consciousness in water and helping people. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. And I hope you all have a wonderful, happy day every day. Yes, happiness to everyone. And don't forget, think about everything you say and because the power of intention and take words of love, peace, harmony, whatever you feel you're lacking, taper on your drinking glass or your whatever vessel you're using for drinking to bring mm. this love peace and harmony and if your plants are not growing just give them lots of love and put love in the water so thank you all right well thank, thank you. you so much beverly again <laughs>